Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna show you how to remove dents from your car. Now, I have no clue what the previous owner did to get all these dents, but that's okay because it gives me the opportunity to show you guys how to remove dents and make this perfectly smooth so you would never even know there are any dents here in the first place. Now, there are two main methods to remove dents from your car. First is a paintless dent removal kit like this, and if you have shallow, non-sharp dents, this kit can help remove those or make them less visible without having to spray paint your car. So what you do is add some hot glue to the polar tab from the kit and place that in the dent. Then you take the slide hammer attachment and pull the dent outwards. This is not as easy as it looks, and it takes a lot of practice. And then if you pull this dent out too far, like I just did, you're able to lightly tap the dent back in with a plastic coated hammer and try to make that dent even with the rest of the body panel. Again, it's not easy to do, and it doesn't work on every dent, but with practice, you could get decent results. Now, unfortunately, paintless dent removal won't work for these dents because we have some deep dents that are pretty sharp, so that metal is really bent, and it'll be hard to massage that so it's flat again. Also, you can see all these dents have damage to the paintwork in them. So even if we did get the dents out, we'd still have all this damage here, so we'd have to paint the car anyway. So since we can't use paintless dent removal to remove these dents, the other common method to remove dents is to use a pro-grade body filler. And with this, there are three simple steps to remove these dents. First, you prep the dents by sanding them down to bare metal. Then you fill the dents with the pro-grade body filler. And finally, you sand it down so it's smooth and even with the rest of the panel. Now that leaves you with a smooth but unfinished surface, so you'd have to either take it to a paint guy, or you could paint it yourself at home. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to paint it and make it look absolutely amazing. So let's get started. And now here's everything you're gonna need to repair the dents in your car. As usual, I like to use common hand tools and easy to find products that give you great results. So you could get this job done at home yourself, no problem at all. So first, we're gonna need our pro-grade body filler and pro-grade glazing putty. These are professional grade products, so they're gonna give you amazing amazing results if you use them properly, and I'm gonna teach you how to use them properly. Then we need some sandpaper, all the way from 80 grit up to 5,000 grit. Then we have our spreaders, we have our sanding block, tack cloth, we have our tape, and isopropyl alcohol. Now I did say we are gonna spray paint at home and I wasn't kidding, we're using spray cans, but we're gonna get amazing results, I can't wait to show you. So we need our primer, our base coat, which is our color coat, and this is color coded to our car, I'll show you how to find that on your car, and then we have our automotive 2K clear coat. After this dries, we're gonna wet sand and then compound and polish to get that amazing glossy finish that looks like the rest of the car. Now safety is very important, so make sure you're wearing at least an N95 dust mask when you're sanding, and make sure you get your safety glass is on and then when you're spray painting it's very important to use a full face respirator with organic filters so you're not breathing any of that spray paint in and I do want to thank Evercoat very much for supporting this video and sending me out their body filler and their glazing putty that way I could teach you guys how to properly fix dents in your vehicle now enough talk let's go grab our dust mask and let's get started with step number one preparing the dents so we could add our filler now since we have a bunch of dents right here and we have a nice size dent back there, we're gonna end up spray painting this entire door panel. So if you have any plastic trim like this piece right here, you wanna remove it. So use a plastic trim removal tool and pry the trim out, being careful not to damage the door. And as you remove this trim, you might break the plastic clips that hold it in, but don't worry, they're inexpensive and easy to replace. And it's that easy to remove door trim like this. Now, I did break a couple of these plastic clips. It's bound to happen. They're old, they're brittle. And the new ones will make the trim fit even tighter to the door than the old factory worn out ones. All right, so with our trim removed, now we're gonna go and sand down all these dents to bare metal. It's important we get down to bare metal because our body filler adheres best to bare metal. So we're gonna sand this down, but before we do that, it's very important that we clean this surface because there's oils and dirt and stuff on this paint surface and we don't want to rub that into our metal. So grab a degreaser like soapy water and spray down the entire panel so we could clean it off. Soapy water is just a teaspoon of dish soap and the rest water and it works great at removing dirt and it also removes waxes and oils that way we won't push them into the dents we're working on. So with our panel nice and clean, now we wanna use 80 grit sandpaper and sand down all these dents and get them to bare metal. Now we wanna keep our sanding localized to our dents. We don't wanna sand out this whole area because that just creates a lot more work. So to help you visualize where the dents are and how far out we're sanding from those dents, I'm gonna circle each of them. And I can see there's a little bit of waviness in this paint up here that I wanna to try to sand smooth, so I'm gonna circle this area as well. Now these circles are here for guides. I'm not saying you can't sand outside the circle. It's gonna happen. Just try not to focus outside the circle. Focus inside the circle. And now we have one last dent on this door panel right under the handle here. Now I know you guys know what a dent is, but it's not as simple as it might seem. So obviously the dent is that deep indentation right there. 
but the metal around it is also indented. It's not flush against the rest of the body. If I take one of these striped dent boards and you take a look at the reflection, you'll get a true sense of how wide the dent actually is. So I'm gonna mark the outside edge of this dent just to show you guys, even though the dent looks small and tight, the metal around it is also bent inwards, so it's much bigger than you think. So inside that circle, we definitely need to get it to bare metal so our filler could stick, but also around it, about an inch or two around it, we wanna have to bare metal so the filler could stick there too, and when we sand it, we could get it even with the rest of the body panel. And real quick, I'm also gonna circle this dent just like the others. So now that we know where the entire dent is, and we have our area circled so we stay within that area, now we're ready to sand it down with our 80 grit sandpaper. Now when using your sandpaper, you don't wanna just use your fingers like this because that'll create hot spots where your fingers are. That's where most of the sanding will be. So what I like to do is I like to grab a kitchen sponge and wrap my sandpaper around the kitchen sponge so now this has some give to it. It distributes that force over the sandpaper a little bit better and you won't get any hot spots when you sand. So now we wanna focus on this area and then work our way out and sand this whole thing. So with your dust mask on, sand the dent to bare metal and the first time you do this, it's definitely gonna be weird to sand the paint on your car, but you're gonna to have to trust the process and not worry about it. Now, if you notice that the sandpaper is getting all gummed up, just flick it a couple of times and you can see the dust comes right off. Removing this dust is gonna unclog that sandpaper so it works better and makes it easier for you. So finish sanding the dent down to bare metal and this shiny metal right here is bare metal, but you can still see we have paint inside the dent that we need to get out. So now you can use your finger and create a hot spot and sand deep into that dent to get all the paint out. It's very important you get this dent down to bare metal because body filler bonds best to bare metal. Beautiful, now after you're done sanding, this is exactly what it should look like. You can see inside our dent, there is no paint at all. It is down to bare metal. And then about an inch or so outside of our dent, we have bare metal as well. Now we also sanded into the surrounding paintwork. Not a lot, but a little bit so that we could feather that sanding out and you could see the different layers of paint. You could see the primer they put down from the factory, the base coat, which is the color coat, and our clear coat. You wanna have a nice smooth transition. If you close your eyes, you can't even feel that there's anything there. You don't want anything that you could grab your fingernail on and that's nice and smooth, and that's exactly what you want. So that's one dent done, now let's go get the other dent sanded down. Now with the other dents, you wanna follow the same exact process, making sure you sand each one down to bare metal and remove all the paint in the deep part of the dent. The 80 grit sandpaper works pretty quickly, but if you have an electric sander, definitely consider using it because it'll make this process so much quicker. But as usual, I wanna show you guys you could get this done by hand, no problem. All right, so all our dents are sanded down to bare metal and there's no more paint in them. Also, this spot right up here is sanded so that it's smooth because we had a little wave in the paint, so we might as well make it perfect while we're sanding everything down. Now we can finish up the first step by getting some isopropyl alcohol on a rag and wipe down the whole panel to remove all the dust that we just created. All right, so with all the dents sanded down to bare metal and I cleaned it off with alcohol, I also did the same thing to the rear dents as well. All of these have been cleaned up. Now we need to let that alcohol flash off. It needs to evaporate for about 10, 15 minutes. And in the meantime, let me show you how to mix your body filler. Now we're using Evercoat Body Shop Pro Grade Body Filler, and this stuff is super easy to work with. So under the cap, you can see here, we have our hardener, which we have to mix in with our filler. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But my favorite thing about this entire kit is this sheet right here. This makes your life so much easier. Every can of filler comes with the sheet and it makes it impossible to mess up mixing your filler and your hardener. Check this out. So first, what I suggest you do is grab some tape and tape down your sheet to a piece of cardboard or some flat surface. That way it's easier to mix on. Next, we need to pop the lid open with a flathead screwdriver. And I always like to mix the filler to make sure it has a uniform consistency throughout. And don't worry, this easily wipes right off a of metal with a towel. Now after we mix up the filler, what we're gonna do is figure out how much filler we're gonna need. So this two inch circle, this four inch circle, or this six inch circle. And I prefer to start with the smaller amounts just because you could always add more filler later. But if you fill this up and you don't use all that filler, it's just a waste. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this four inch circle and this should be enough to do all the dents on both doors. So pour out the filler, that way it fills the circle. Just like that, good. So after you fill that four inch circle, the next thing you're gonna do is grab your cream hardener and you wanna knead the hardener. Sometimes this stuff sits on a shelf for a little bit and it might separate a little. And just to make sure it's consistent and we get good results, mix up that hardener. Now you just squeeze out a bead of hardener to cover this four inch line like that. And that's perfect. And now you can see why I really like this sheet. It's such a great idea. It guarantees that you get the correct amount of filler and hardener. So that ratio is accurate. That way this hardens properly and we get a great result. 
Now you wanna grab your spreader and we're gonna mix these two together. Now it's important that you don't stir with the spreader. You wanna make sure that you're folding. If you stir, you're gonna introduce air bubbles and then when you go add this to the car, it's gonna create pinholes from those air bubbles. And that's gonna give you a bad result. So the technique is to fold the hardener into the filler and let me show you how to fold. All you do is scoop up the mixture like this and then spread it out. Scoop it up and then spread it out. And then you wanna repeat this process until you can no longer see any blue hardener in that filler. It has to all get mixed in and be one color. And as you spread it out, you can actually see the air trapped in the filler come right out, which is good. So this should take you a maximum of 30 seconds to get this fully mixed like this. So that's perfect. We don't have any more blue in our filler. It is completely mixed in, and we also spread it out nice and thin so that it doesn't heat up. Right now, this is undergoing an exothermic reaction, so it's heating up, and the hotter it gets, the quicker it hardens. If it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit out, we have about five minutes of work time before this hardens, so not a ton of time. So with that said, let's take this and fill our dents. All right, so what we wanna do first is start with a small amount of filler on our spreader and wet the bare metal surface. So get your spreader and really press hard and force that filler into the dent and surrounding bare metal. The filler has resin in it and we want that resin to wet the bare metal. And that's gonna help provide better adhesion for the layers of filler we put on top of it. And then after you wet the surface like that, now we could add our first layer and push it deep into the dent, forcing any air out and also keep the layer thin. That way we don't get any air bubbles, which leads to pinholes. Now it looks like we just need one more thin layer to build this up slightly higher than the surrounding panel. Perfect. So this is a great example. We did a good job at keeping the filler within the sanded area. It's not all over the place. It's not down here outside on the paint. Because if it is, it's gonna take a lot of work to sand that all down. So by keeping it within here, we're doing a lot less work when we have to sand it down. We also didn't put globs of filler on here. There isn't a mountain of filler. It's just a little bit higher than the surrounding bodywork. Again, that's gonna make it easier to sand down and get smooth and even with the bodywork once this dries. And this will be dry and sandable in 15 minutes, so let's quickly get the other dents done. So wet the bare metal down by pushing a thin layer of filler onto the dent really hard, then build up the layers of filler so it's higher than the surrounding panel. Same thing for the other dents. Wet the surface like so, and then add more filler and smooth it out so it's slightly higher than the surrounding panel. And on that wavy spot up here, I'm just gonna put a thin coat of filler since it really isn't a dent. Okay, so not bad. All of the dents are completely filled. We do have a little bit of a low spot right here. Probably could have added a little more filler to get that higher, but not a big deal because after we sand this down, we're gonna add our glazing putty and our glazing putty is designed to fill low spots and pinholes. So that came out perfect. Our spot right here under the handle came out perfect and off camera, I did the rear door panel and all those dents are completely filled. Now, just to give you an idea, here is how much filler we have left. There's plenty of filler left and we use that four inch circle and I did the entire front door and all the dents on the rear door. So hopefully that gives you an idea for your project how much filler you're gonna need. You really don't need that much. So now what we need to do is let this sit for about 15 minutes. That way it cures and dries and then we could go and sand it down. Now as we let that dry, I have a quick tip on how to keep your spreaders nice and clean because it's hard to clean these spreaders off once that filler gets on there. And the trick is to just leave a bunch of filler on your spreader. Don't clean it off. Make sure you have a bunch clumped on there like that. And then after your filler hardens, check this out. Grab your spreader and just crack your spreader like this and you can see the filler comes right off in one big piece, leaving behind an undamaged nice and clean spreader. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes, so grab your 80 grit sandpaper, and we are ready to sand down all the body filler to make it flush with our panel. Now, when sanding your filler, it's very important that you use a sanding block like this because it's completely flat and it's solid. That's gonna give you the best smooth surface that's level with the rest of the body panel. If you sand it by hand, you have these pressure points on your fingers, and that could create little waves or indents into the filler. And as you're sanding, a little helpful tip that works really well is to sand in an X pattern. That way you're sanding down the filler in different directions, which will give you a flatter, more even result. So that's what your dent should look like after the 80 grit sanding. Now we wanna move up to the 180 grit sandpaper. And with the 180 grit, you wanna sand down the dent, but you also wanna start feathering it out. So you wanna sand about six to 12 inches outside that dent into the surrounding paintwork like this. All right, now that is absolutely perfect. If you close your eyes and you run your hand across this, you cannot feel in any direction that there is a dent. It just feels like one smooth body panel and that's exactly what you want. Now with that 180 grit, you saw me sanding out here as well. We feathered out the sanding. So we went from this tight area and moved outwards to remove all those 80 grit scratches we introduced. So we have a smooth transition across this whole panel. Don't worry, we're painting the whole thing. So you just wanna make sure that you get rid of those 80 grit scratches with that 180 grit sandpaper. So this is absolutely perfect. That's exactly what you want. Now let's repeat the process right here. 
So sand down the filler with 80 grit in an X pattern to level it out with the surrounding panel. Then switch to 180 grit and again feather out that sanding into the surrounding paintwork to remove all those 80 grit scratches and smooth out that paint. And finally wipe the panel down with alcohol to remove any leftover dust. Okay, so after the 180 grit sandpaper, you can see we feathered out that sanding pretty good now. We have sandpaper scratches all the way out here, which makes a nice smooth transition. Now this dent here feels great. I cannot feel it. This dent, there is a low spot. This dent, just like we thought, there's a low spot. Same here, low spot on this dent. And then this took no body filler. This is actually completely smooth, so I guess the little waves were from the factory paint job, but we smoothed that out so we won't have an issue there. So with this completely sanded with 180 grit, we know where there's spots that we need to fill. Now let me show you how to mix the glazing putty to get rid of these low spots and the pinholes. Now our glazing putty gets mixed the same exact way we just mixed our body filler. Just make sure you get a new mixing sheet. This mixing sheet has all these little pieces of body filler on it, and if that gets in our glazing putty, it's gonna ruin the putty and ruin our finish. So out with the old, and in with the new. Now what happens if you don't have a new mixing sheet? Well, you either need a two, four, or six inch diameter circle, and either a two, four, or six inch line for our hardener. Now funny enough, our spreader is four inches long, so you can make a circle with your spreader, or the back part of this cap for our filler is about four inches. So what you could do is get a piece of cardboard and trace a four inch circle for your filler, like that. And then draw a four inch line for your hardener. But you never wanna mix your filler or your putty on here because your hardener will soak into a cardboard surface and then you won't have the correct ratio. So a little trick is to grab a plastic Ziploc bag like this and cover your cardboard with plastic. The plastic won't absorb any of the hardener and it's a nice flat mixing surface. Now we could go and mix our glazing putty. And what I like to do is I like to knead the glazing putty just like before where we kneaded the hardener to make sure it's all mixed up and there's no separation. And then pour out the putty to fill the four inch circle. And then once you have that circle filled, next let's lay down our four inch bead of hardener. Good. And finally we could fold our hardener into the putty. Just like before, spend no more than 30 seconds getting this completely mixed. Perfect. So we don't have any more blue streaks and our putty is all mixed up. We spread it out, that way it stays cool. We have about five minutes of work time until this hardens, so let's go fill the low spots and the pinholes. Okay, so when adding your first layer of glazing putty, this should be a thin layer, and we wanna force that putty into the filler to squeeze out any air bubbles and get a good bond to the filler and surrounding metal. Then we could add some more putty to build it up and get it higher than the surrounding area, and do the same thing to the other dents. Push the putty into the filler like that, and then add another layer of putty over that. This doesn't have to be perfect coverage because with the putty, we're just filling in low spots and pinholes in the filler. So just focus on building up enough putty over all the dents that you're working on. So with the glazing putty covering all the dents on the front door panel off camera, I also did the rear door panel. Now all we have to do is let this sit for 15 minutes so it could cure and harden. And then after that, we'll go sand it down so it's super smooth. Okay, so 15 minutes later, we could sand this down starting with 320 grit this time. And as you sand, make long strokes going past the dent and not focusing your sanding on one specific area. We don't want to create any flat spots. <laughs> oh man, this feels so good. It's nice and smooth and you can't even tell that there was any dent here at all. This is perfect. Okay, so now we want to do the same thing for the other dents. Using 320 grit sandpaper, take long strokes going all the way across the putty and we just want to get this nice and smooth. Now this came out perfect except for one little spot right here. You can see there is a little nick or a little air bubble that we got in there. So I quickly mixed up a batch of putty and all we wanna do is fill in this little indent and just build up one more layer. Good, and then we could just sand this down with 320 grit. That way we don't have any indents in our bodywork when we go to paint. And check it out, we are done with the most difficult part, getting our dents nice and even with the rest of the panel. And this looks absolutely perfect. All the dents are nice and flush, and our panel is looking great. So now what we need to do is we need to sand it down with 320 and then 400 to get it ready for paint. So let's start with 320 grit, and we wanna sand down anywhere we're gonna paint. So in this case, sand down the entire door. That way the paint has a good surface to grab onto. After the 320 grit, we wanna sand down the panel with 400 grit, which is the final sanding before paint. So make sure you get this panel looking nice and smooth and there's no visible deep scratches. Because at this point, if you could clearly see the scratch, you're gonna clearly see it after you paint it, so make sure you smooth them out. Perfect, and with both doors evenly sanded down with 400 grit, now we need to get rid of all this dust. And a leaf blower works great here. So just blow all that dust away. That way when we paint, none of this dust gets kicked up and lands on our paint, which wouldn't be good. Now let's do one last alcohol wipe to make sure we remove all the dust from the panel and check it out. 
At this point, all the dents are filled and the door is perfectly smooth and ready for paint. Although right now it doesn't look amazing, just wait till the next step where we get paint on it and make these dents completely disappear. All right, now I wanna keep things realistic for you guys. Remember, we're using spray paint cans outdoors in my driveway. Don't expect perfect professional results. We're gonna get as good results as possible with spray cans, but if you want perfect results, go to a body guy, go to a paint shop, and have them spray paint it for you. If you're okay with pretty good results, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So, first, we're gonna be using an automotive primer, and we wanna cover all that bare metal and our filler, that way it seals it off, and also it gives our next coat, our base coat, a good layer to adhere to. So our base coat is literally the color of our car. This is 354 Titan Silver. This is the metallic silver BMW uses, so it's a paint color match, and I'm gonna show you right now how to get the paint code for your car so you can get the exact color. So to find the color code in your car, usually on the driver's side, there are door jam stickers, like these right here, and it'll list the color code for your car. Now on this BMW, they make it a little bit different. You have to go in the engine bay, and right here on the driver's side shock tower, you can see BMW Titan Silver Metallic. That is our paint code. So that's how you find the paint code for your car so you could color match your spray paint. So after that base coat goes down, finally we have our last coat, the clear coat, which seals everything in and gives you that nice glossy finish. Now the clear coat we're using is a 2K clear coat, which is a special clear coat that has hardener built into it. So if you look at the lid, we have this little red cap right here. This cap goes on the bottom of the can here, like that. And then you would snap this in and that will release the hardener into the paint. Then you'll shake this up and now we have a two part clear coat. The benefit of a two-part clear coat is it's much more similar to a factory clear coat with the hardness, with the chemical resistance, and the UV resistance. So it's a lot more durable, especially for a spray can. But the downside is this is very dangerous to breathe in. It's very important that you don't breathe in the isocyanates in here. So it's very important that you use the correct full face respirator that fits you properly and the correct organic filters if you use a 2K clear coat. So with just a couple of spray cans and a respirator, I'm gonna show you how to get the best possible results in your driveway. So let's get started. So now it's very important, anything that you don't want painted, you need to make sure that you cover up. For example, our fender right here, we don't wanna get paint on it, so this has to be taped up and covered. And when you're taping off parts like this chrome trim, it's important that you pay attention to the details. Don't just tape it off and call it a day. Not only do you wanna make sure these tape lines are really straight, but you wanna go the extra step. I like to tuck the tape under the trim, that way paint could get onto the door under the trim, which will make this paint job come out so much better. And taping up the car does take a long time, so watch this neat little trick. Okay, so we're almost ready to paint. Now, I set up this tent area because we don't wanna get anything on our paintwork as we're painting. It's not ideal to paint outside, but that's what we have to work with. And it's important that we don't get things landing on our paint as it's drying, otherwise it's not gonna look good. So this tent hopefully will do the trick. Now before we start painting, you wanna grab your tack cloth and we're gonna use this to remove any dust or pollen that might have settled on any of the panels that are going to get painted. And a tack cloth is literally a tacky cloth that leaves behind no residue. So lightly wipe down the entire door panel to remove anything that might have settled on it, that way we don't spray paint over dust. All right, so now comes the fun part, painting. We're gonna start out with our primer, and we're only gonna prime any sections that have filler and bare metal. So anytime you paint, always follow the instructions on the can, because every brand has different instructions. In this case, we wanna put down a light first coat on any areas with bare metal and filler. That way we can seal this in and prevent corrosion. A few minutes after the first coat, we could hit the spots again with a second coat, and we wanna feather out that second coat more into the surrounding paint to blend it in. And then finally, let's lay down our third and final coat to seal it all in. Good. Next is our base coat. When spraying base coat with a paint can, it's best to start spraying off the panel like onto our garbage bag, and then smoothly go across the panel at a consistent distance and speed to lay down even coats. We want our first coat to be pretty thin, don't expect it to cover the whole door in silver. And since this is a metallic paint, you could hear me shaking the can every so often to get that metallic flake to stay suspended in our can. That way it comes out evenly. And after a few minutes, we could add our second coat and again, focus on moving smoothly and evenly across the panel. That way we could lay down another even coat. And then a few minutes later, we could lay down our third and final coat. And just so you have an idea, I used three paint cans and I barely have enough paint to do both doors. So if I were you, I'd get two cans for every panel that you're working on. Okay, a few minutes later, we are ready for our clear coat. So remember, we need to take this cap off and let's put it on the bottom to release our hardener. And then you just have to give it a firm hit like that. And now the hardener is released into the can. And then make sure you shake this for a good minute or two to mix it all up. And then we're ready to spray. 
Just like our base coat, we want to have smooth, consistent, even coats. But with our clear coat, we want this to go on just a little bit thicker than our base coat. This will help us get a better finish from our spray can. Just make sure you don't put it on too thick and it runs. And then after our first coat dries for a few minutes, we can lay down our second coat and just make sure you get full coverage. And then after that second coat dries, let's lay down our third and final coat. And this should be the thickest coat out of all of them. Not too thick that it runs, but thick enough so that you can see it's going on to make a smooth, glossy surface. And just like that, we are done. Now we just need to let this dry for a day and then we can wet sand, compound, and polish. All right, and 24 hours later, we are ready for our final step, and that is to wet sand, compound, and then polish. And this is a very important step. So we're gonna start out with our wet sanding. And the reason why this is so important is because we use spray cans. Spray paint doesn't go on very nicely. You got some good spots, you got some bad spots. We need to smooth it out and make it all even. Why not? let me show you real quick. So you can see this section right here, it has a pretty good reflection. That's straight from a spray can. So that's not bad, that's smooth clear coat. And then this up here is all rough and this down here is all rough. That's rough clear coat, that's because it's from a spray can. We're gonna be able to get that rough clear coat to look shinier than that by wet sanding. And unfortunately you can see right there, that's a little bit of pollen. As I was working, we had these things landing all over the car. Luckily I had that tent up, but some still happened to get on here. So this is just the reality of spray painting and working outside. This is stuff you could expect when you're doing it. If you don't want pollen like that, take it to a paint guy and he'll be able to do it perfect. But we'll still get this to buff out really nice and look great. So let me show you how. So to even out that paintwork, we're gonna start wet sanding with a thousand grit and work our way to 1500 and then 2000. 3,000 all the way up to 5,000 grit, which is super fine. The reason why we're going that fine is because we're doing the next steps by hand. Compound and polish is all gonna be done with a polishing pad by hand. So after we wet sand, we move on to compounding and polishing. This is our Automagic PC1, that's next, that's our compound. And then we move up to the PC2, that's our polish. And then finally we finish off with the PC3. This is a super fine polish to give us that really glossy, deep, rich look we all expect from paintwork. Well, you know what, let me show you. So I already did the back door to show you guys how good this could come out. And check it out, this came out absolutely amazing. So that's what you could expect from our front door. So let me show you how to wet sand, compound, and polish. Okay, so grab your soapy water and let's spray down the entire panel. Really get it wet so that the sandpaper is well lubricated. And we're gonna start with our thousand grit, so wrap it around your sponge, and then we need to wet sand the entire panel. When wet sanding, make sure you sand the panel in every direction, side to side, and up and down. Then once you're done sanding down the entire panel, you wanna wipe it down with a towel to remove all that sanding residue, and now we can move up to 1500 grit. So again, spray down the panel with soapy water, then sand down the entire panel, and then wipe it down with a towel to remove the sanding residue. We wanna repeat this process with our 2000 grit sandpaper, which is pretty fine, then our 3000 grit sandpaper, which is really fine, and finally, our 5000 grit sandpaper, which is super fine. All right, so after we're done wet sanding, we have a nice uniform haze across the entire panel. It looks almost like a matte paint job. There's no gloss and there's barely any reflection. It's almost like it's uh, the reflection's foggy and that's exactly what you wanna see. You don't see any individual scratches at all and that means we're ready for our compound and polish. Now at this step, if you have a DA polisher, definitely use it. It'll make your job so much easier and you'll probably get better results, more glossy results at least. But you guys know we are doing this by hand, so get your polishing pad like this. We're gonna start with the Automagic PC1, which is like a compound, and you don't need a lot. Just get a little bit on your polishing pad like that and we'll start with that amount. So you understand what we're doing. Compound is a very fine abrasive that's removing those wet sanding scratches so you can't see them anymore. So when compounding, you wanna use a medium heavy pressure and you want to buff in tight circles to attack the scratches on the panel in every direction. Work your way down the door and make sure you overlap your circles so you don't miss buffing the compound into any spots on the panel. Doing this by hand takes a lot of time and elbow grease. Trust me when I say invest in a DA polisher and you could thank me later. Then after you're done buffing the compound, use a clean microfiber towel and buff away all that compound residue off the panel. <laughs> oh man, I'm exhausted already, but look, it's worth the effort. This looks absolutely amazing. We're not even done yet. This is our first step of three different steps. The compound step looks great. It's like a semi-gloss right now. Definitely a lot more shine than with the 5000 grit, of course. And it's really cutting down those scratches. And the next step, the polishing step, should give us a pretty good shine. Now with the PC2, flip your buffing pad over to the clean side and add the polish to that side. Then same thing here, buff the entire door with a medium heavy pressure using tight circles, and I think you get the idea. It just takes a lot of time and elbow grease. 
And finally, for our last step, add the PC3 to a new buffing pad and use medium pressure and buff in tight circles. Now, when you're done with this, if you don't have the shine you want, you might have to start over with the PC1 and then use PC2 and PC3 again to cut into that clear coat even more and remove even more scratches. But this is coming out pretty good. Okay, after our super fine final polish, check out this finish. This came out amazing, especially for doing this in your driveway. Is it perfect? No, but this is way better than what we started with. We had dents, we had key marks, we had scratches all over this panel, and now it looks amazing. I mean, take a look at that shine. That's not too shabby for a hand compound and polish, and I'm totally happy with that. Now, we can't forget to add our plastic trim, and I got new trim to complete the look, and then all you have to do is tap the trim into the door like that, and that looks awesome. But do I have a surprise for you? And that's why I wanted to get the dents removed. And check it out. What do you guys think of the new livery? I think it came out awesome. Soapy water racers. We have a race coming up, so I had to get the car wrapped. You're supposed to wait about two weeks before you wrap over paint that you just put down. But again, race is coming up shortly, so I had to get it done, and it looks so good. There's no dents here, which will make this look rough and indented, and the wrap came out perfect, and the door panel just looks amazing this wrap looks so good so there you go that's everything you guys need to know on how to properly remove dents from your car using common hand tools as always i hope this video was helpful if it was remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not a subscriber definitely consider hitting that subscribe button for more money saving diy videos like this and as always all the tools and products i used in this video will be linked down in the description so you guys could easily find them